Amber, why did you do this? Why? Seriously, it's the $100 million question on all of our minds. Anyways, here's Camille blowing her out again. Let's see the tape. Also, friendly reminder, if you guys are in Los Angeles, my live show is coming up on June 10th at Moroccan Lounge in Los Angeles. You can get tickets clicking on the link in the description, but it's gonna be me just doing what we do here now, hanging out, watching videos. I'm gonna tell you some stories, I'm gonna do a little stand-up, tell a little joke, a little something, something. It's gonna be a fun time. We just did a show in New York City. It was a blast. Come out, come hang out. Can't wait to see it. Let's just hop into it. The last day of Amber Heard. Well, second to last, cause we'll talk about the verdict a little bit. What are your thoughts on Dr. Spiegel? Jesus Christ, that was a mess. I know you I know you guys saw this one. That was just wild. That was the dude doing the blah, 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 like with his mouth. Somebody's gonna clip that, I know it. So if you guys don't know, Dr. Spiegel is this witness. I'll give you a little two minute of this and then we're rolling into the rest of the Heard trial. Okay. I How I've seen him interact in public. I have seen him interact with others. I've seen him interact in media. I've seen him interact all, and his process speed is certainly not slow. I've seen him do commercials. His process speed was not slow. At deposition, didn't you say that what you did was compare Mr. Depp's performance in live? I've been true. He's looking like, where did they get this witness? Look, guys, when, when they're picking out witnesses for expert testimony, they, there's a couple things. You want them to be credible because the other attorney is gonna try to tear down their credibility at all costs, right? That's the easy one to go for. And also, you want them to be likable. You want your expert witness to be liked by the jury. And the, the problem with Dr. Spiegel is, he is beyond unlikable and his other person is, you know, that we might compare it to is like Dr. Curry, who is very much loved right now. So you can see how important that is with the jury and especially with us. Lots of pirate movies against his deposition testimony what here. I, what I said was I've seen Mr. Depp do Apology ads. I remember he did apology ad with Bad Dog with no delay in process speed. I've seen him interact with the media regarding to that. I saw no delay in processing speed. All I'm saying. Let me ask you about pirates, though. You compared pirates to the tech uh, to to the depositions given in this I, case. Then I apologize for what I said. Then yeah. I misspoke. You misspoke. You didn't. Say in a conversation, not in the court of law. When somebody says to you, like, I, I misspoke, then I apologize for what I said, you're like, oh, okay, we can move on. But when you say that in court, it's like, wait, bitch, what the f like you were supposed to come in with the facts from day one till now. What has changed? What is <laughs> make the comparison right now, just a second ago? Just a second ago, I I may have said that now I now he's getting compared. I apologize, I misspoke. Okay. Because you know you can't compare pirates to sworn testimony, right? Yes. Okay. But you uh, can, but as an aside, you can judge someone's processing speed at any time. Like so, like, in my opinion, part of the reason why we really dislike Dr. Spiegel after that is because what he just showed, I'll show it to you one more time. Yes. Okay. But you uh, can't, but the conversation was over and Spiegel starts talking again. We have met people before that always have to get the last word in. And this man has just demonstrated that he's one of them. The conversation was over. We were moving on to the next question. Dr. Spiegel, it is time <laughs> to shut the fuck up. But he kept talking. This kind of says like, this is a person that's not going to let it go. This is a person that has to get the last word in. And you're not thinking about all those things per se, but you're just thinking this person has characteristics of other people that I don't like. And that's kind of how we come to that conclusion but as an aside you can't judge someone's processing speed at any time like i'm judging yours right now you're judging mine we all judge processing speed as a baseline because of what we know about each other i would say your process speed right now is not slow so Thank i you. mean we're judging processing speed i'm just saying to you what is processing yeah um so but no any of mr depp's other portrayals in movies, did that affect your analysis of processing speed? Only I've seen him interact w on interviews, right. and that was it. Right. When he wasn't in movies. Right. Another right. reason that he comes off as unlikable, and once again, I want to reiterate that these are little tiny things that we're not thinking about in depth. We're just like, I don't like him, right? This one too. In movies, did that affect your analysis of processing speed? Only I've seen him interact. <laughs> the question way too fast this is okay if you're a person that you know is quick in conversation and going you know back and forth this is really truly okay sometimes 
But in this situation where we're expecting to let one another speak and respect each other's words, him starting to talk before the man has even finished the sentence is like, I know what you're going to say and I already know my answer. So it's like this is somebody that's listening to react rather than to respond, which is literally the most annoying shit in the entire world. On interviews and that was it. Right. When he wasn't in movies. What, right. But Willy Wonka doesn't matter to you. You, you see him in that movie, Charlie and Chocolate Factory? Oh my god, this is so awful. Did you look at that one when you were comparing his process of speed? <laughs> is, is that, do I have to answer that question, Your Honor? You have to answer questions. Yes, sir. No, you'll be happy. No, I didn't see Willy Wonka as a... I didn't see 21 Jump Street when it happened. Whatever. It was. <laughs> no, I did not. All right. You judge, do I have to answer that question? Uh, yes, Dr. Spiegel, you have to answer what? Yeah, yes, yes, you have to, yes, you have to answer the question. Wait, wait you made a, a very kind admission, yeah. I think, early on in your deposition that you're not claiming to be a better actor than Mr. Depp. <laughs> That's correct, isn't it? 100%. All right, but with respect to acting. You know that actors actually rehearse for their parts and work on the language, diction, timing of their dialogue as part of that rehearsal? If you say that, I'm not an actor, so I don't know what goes on. I can't tell you. I have no idea what goes on in acting. Okay, but you, you don't know enough about acting to know whether actors rehearse? Sir, I am not an expert in acting. I have no idea what an actor does. Then okay. why are you commenting on it? Wasn't he making comments about whether Johnny memorized his lines or not? And bro, dude, let me tell you something too. Like, yo, one in the chat, if you've ever done like a play or maybe like some acting or just something where you had to memorize quite a few lines, whether it's a monologue or conversational line thing or something like that. Bro, memorizing shit is annoying. It is, it is really, truly annoying. And when you're a big actor like Johnny Depp, then you get paid the big bucks and then somebody feeds you your lines. It's not like it was, you know, 20 or 30 years ago when you were first starting and memorizing all those lines like that. Because look at all those ones. Memorizing lines is hard work. So they tried to criticize Johnny that sometimes he gets fed lines. They said through like an earpiece or something like that. I really wouldn't be surprised if he did occasionally. And then, you know, conversational cues will prompt him for his other lines. But what I just found so interesting is, guys, how often have we seen Amber blame Johnny for stuff that she actually does? Well, surprise, surprise, surprise. Before this testimony even came out, there was, and I've talked about this before, the stunt man, I was lagging again, the stunt man that commented on my Twitter that basically said that Amber had to be fed her lines through the whole Aquaman. Bitch, it's an action film. <laughs> like, how, how many lines? How many lines? How many? <laughs> All right, let's let's dive into this. We're going to watch uh, her taking the stand because I obviously gonna have some comments on this. And then we're going to watch Camille rip her a new butthole because I also have comments about that. Thank you, ma'am. Just a reminder, you're still under oath, okay? Of course, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you. All right, your question. Amber, just to orient you and the jury. So this is her this team time. questioning her. So we're going to let Amber get her words in first and then uh, we'll see it. See what happens. We're in the rebuttal to your counterclaim against Mr. Depp. So I'm going to confine my questions to that. Okay. All right. How have you suffered public? Uh, okay. I'm sorry. Just this is just this one. Whenever she comes in with that. All right. All right. She does it again when Camille cross examines her. It sounds so fake, dude. How do you not hear it, Amber? As a result of the Depp Waldman <laughs> statements. Objection, speculation. Ooh. Overruled. Penny being fair. I am harassed, humiliated, threatened every single day. Even just walking into this courtroom, sitting here in front of the world, 
having the worst parts of my life, things that I've lived through, used to humiliate me. People want to kill me, and they tell me so every day. People want to put my baby in the microwave, and they tell me that. Johnny threatened, promised, promised me that if I ever left him, he'd no. make me think of him every single day no. that I lived. Objection, Your Honor. Hold on. She said if I ever left him. Look, let me be clear. A couple of things that Amber's going to say in the beginning of this, I believe are true. Has she experienced global humiliation? Absolutely. Has she, is she getting death threats? Is 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 her life possibly in danger? I, like, I don't know. There's some crazy people out there. But all of this, the fucked up thing is, the question he asked her is, how has your life changed as a result of the Depp Waldman statements? Those statements were made years ago. She is recounting how she feels right now. She even mentions how it feels coming into the courtroom that day. So he's asking her a question from the past and she's siphoning emotions from the present. And why are we here in this courtroom right now, Amber? Because you took your lies too far. After she won the UK case, she sat there and rubbed it in Johnny's face. She provoked him constantly while sitting here saying that she wanted to be left alone. That simply was not true. So do I believe that she's been harassed and humiliated? Absolutely. But that's a result of this trial and all of her actions leading up to it over the last six years. It has nothing to do with those statements in particular. They're not responsive. I'll sustain the objection as to that, if you want to ask the question. Amber, how did Mr. Depp's statements and threats to you that you were discussing, how do those continue to manifest themselves today? It's, these are new, sister. In the harassment, in the humiliation, the campaign against me that's echoed every single day on social media, and now, in front of cameras, in this room. Oh, so she just wanted to be shitty, and she wanted us to be quiet. Okay. <laughs> that's how, that's day, how narc be, really, trauma. bro. My Let me torture shakes. people in I peace, up, please. Screaming. I, I have to live with the trauma and the damage done to me. My friends have to live with a set of unspoken rules about how to not scare me. Objection hearsay. Yes, sir. Unspoken rules. Oh, Go ahead. about how to not touch me, not to surprise me. My intimate partners have rules about how they can deal with me, how they can touch me. I have rules for doctors and medical professionals I see, gynecologists I see. I live my life with these sets of rules that I have to follow, my friends have to follow for me not to have. I, I... This is so... I mean, the, the reason why so many people have stood up with this case is because having a toxic relationship is a universal experience. And so all of us tuned in to see where we lied. But then Amber has insulted so many communities of people by claiming to be a part of them. Here, I've been very public that I have, I have PTSD. I have severe PTSD. I mean, look, I'm not out here screaming in the hallway at two o'clock in the morning or nothing, but I have severe PTSD. I go through EMDR. I've been in treatment for several years, several years. And I do not have a set of rules for my friends of how they can touch me. I am, I am easily startled. And that is something that, I have been for 20 years and I never created a new set of rules for it. Nobody had to create a new set of rules for that. The, the way that she's describing PTSD is grandiose is the best way I can describe it. And it's very strange to listen to her interpretation of a person with PTSD. A panic attack or a triggering event where I relive the trauma even if I'm training to do my movie, for instance, if I'm training for Aquaman, a combat scene and a trigger happens, I have a meltdown and have to deal with no. that. <laughs> the, the, the. <laughs> Bro! Oh my God. 
this other thing where, oh, I get triggered and then I have a meltdown. Hold on. Everyone in chat that just said that they have PTSD. Hold, let, can we educate here for a minute? This is... Uh, in my in my experience and a lot of people that I've spoken to, this is absolutely not what happens. When I get triggered, I disassociate. I completely leave my body. Oh no, she's gone. Like a lot of people with severe PTSD go into a safe space, which is what's called disassociation. It doesn't immediately leave... Oh my God. Like what she basically just said was, I get triggered and then I go into a meltdown. So like... Imagine this is the trigger. <laughs> like that like that's what she's acting like happens. Being being um triggered, how do I explain it? You go into you you go into a daze. That's the best way I can describe it. You go into a daze. And the reason why triggers are so difficult to deal with is when you go into that state of disassociation or depersonalization or derealization, you really can't shake out of it. And your goal is to act as normal as possible, especially if you're around people in the moment. Um, so this interpretation of PTSD is incorrect, disturbing, insulting, sick, um, and a myriad of other things. See, you see how many people in chat are saying this is not in like, we're not even gatekeeping PTSD. It's just like, what the fuck? You know, um, somebody said something about internal panic. Okay. That's a great one. So then the other responses here are fight, flight, freeze, fawn, right? Those are generally all of the PTSD responses. Well, when I get more of an aggressive response and it's not like full down shutting down and disassociation, it's fight or it's flight, right? And usually I tend to go to flight and it's an irrational, I need to get out of here. I have to get out of here. I need to get to safety. I need to go somewhere. If it's a fight reaction, it's maybe it's much more aggressive. I would not describe any of these reactions as having a meltdown. That is beyond the incorrect word. Crew I work with have to deal with that because of the damage I walk around with every single day from what I've lived through from what I've survived. I'm not sitting in this courtroom snickering. I'm not sitting- Wait, and somebody said, I think she means a panic attack. My last thing on this. Fight, flight, freeze, and fawn are all trauma responses to combat the anxiety. It's in order, those responses are to take control of the anxiety before the anxiety manifests into panic. You will generally have one of these responses before you move into full-blown panic. And that's when all of your options start to fail and you feel trapped. It is very- I mean, she, any doctor could have explained this to her and she could have copied it 10 fucking times better, okay? But who is her doctor? The the one lady that thinks that men can't be abused? In this courtroom laughing, smiling, and making snide jokes. I'm not. This is horrible. This is painful. And this is humiliating for any... Fawn is when you start doing whatever the person says to get them to not be mad at you, basically. People pleasing. I'm laughing, smiling, and making snide jokes. I'm not. This is horrible. This is painful. And this is humiliating for any human being to go through. And perhaps it's easy to forget that, but I'm a human being. And even though Johnny promised that I deserve this and promised he'd do this, I don't deserve this. I want to move on. No, you don't. The statements, the attacks on me, the campaign, that Johnny has elicited millions of people to do on his behalf when he himself objection, couldn't do it. Objection, lack of foundation. Torture me. Speculation. She's trying to get the script out. Objection. She objects, and then Amber continues with whatever she was going to say. She got to get the whole script out, bro. Next question. Amber. How have the Depp Waldman statements impacted your ability to do charitable work? You know, I would, the only reason that people like Dr. Curry can sit up here on the stand and say <laughs> I'm functioning and I do things. She's so 
fucking mad about Dr. Curry because Dr. Curry read her like a book. Why did she just call out Dr. Curry by name? The reason why people like Dr. Curry can come up here. <laughs> Things like have hobbies and have interests. Is actually not responsive. Not... Your Honor, Mr. Depp gave long-winded oh. responses oh, yesterday. Oh, good. Be fair. It's because he found a solution to that pain. She I continue woke up with the every script. morning with panic attacks and trauma until I realized I could do something with it. So to answer your question, Ben, it's I. I was able to turn the things that I've lived through, my pain, my life experiences into work, into action, into providing a voice for other people. I'm not a saint. I'm not trying to present myself as one as you. Yes, you are. That's the problem. Am I crazy or has Amber tried to present herself as a wonderful, nice, battered wife through all of this? Like she's acted like she did nothing wrong. No drinking and alcohol. Oh, just a little weekend at Coachella with my friend with some ecstasy and shrooms. <laughs> like, that's what the problem is. You all know, but I selfishly found relief in being able to use what I've lived through to advocate for others, to, to bring light to these issues, to give a voice to people who don't have the voice in the platform Other people that are I have. doing it. And while I would not wish this situation on my worst enemy, me either, sister. If it, Gives a voice to someone who does. I wouldn't wish on my worst enemy either, but my worst enemy would never do this. <laughs> There's a lot of people that can say that too. Makes you realize your worst enemy may not even be that bad. <laughs> Doesn't have it. But I now, as I stand here today, can't have a career. I can't even have people associate with me because of the would... threats and the attacks that they have to endure. Jackson, when they are. And I can't so, do my charity work. So, 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 <laughs> initial question me 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 dr curry me 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 and i can't do my charity work <laughs> responsive people associate with me because of the threats and the attacks that they have to endure Jackson, when they responsive. and i can't so, do my charity work so, get the, the back to the script amber back to the script amber other than the threats that you've described what other threats have you endured since the debt waldman statements were made i receive hundreds of death threats regularly if not daily thousands since this trial has started people mocking mocking my testimony about being assaulted i don't think that amber is upset that people are mocking her testimony about being assaulted because a lot of us are firmly of the opinion oh did that did did that happen? I think Amber's upset that people are mocking her acting because it, it, it's her it's her ego. She really thought that she was gonna come up on stage and do the performance of her life and out act Johnny Depp. She really did. And not only did it not work, it blew up in her face. And I think she's really embarrassed and angry about this amber keeps saying that she was humiliated but i say this all the time humiliation is something that is done to you but embarrassment is something that you do to yourself and i think amber is very very embarrassed and humiliated actually i think a little bit of both making fun of my objection relevance but she's Not definitely expensive. embarrassed Shit, i would be you can continue. It's been agonizing. Agonizing, painful, and most humiliating thing I've ever had to go through. I hope no one ever Wait, has to Wait, somebody go said, I thought that they weren't supposed to be on social media. Oh, the jury is not supposed to be on social media. Amber has been seeing probably everything y'all have been doing <laughs> and through the trial and bro you know i do i gotta say this like i i i hope she gets a nice little place and you know holds up somewhere and raises her daughter and has a has a nice time because if i were amber i would not leave the fucking house i would be way too embarrassed do something like this but look i gotta say yo she's a tough oh. bitch <laughs> 
just want Johnny to leave me alone. I just want him to leave me alone. I've said that for years now, and I thought he would after 2020. Objection non-responsive. All right, I'll sustain the objection. Next question. What do you hope to reclaim after this is over? There's nothing. Protecting the secret that I did for as long as I did has taken enough of my voice. Johnny, Johnny has taken enough of my voice. I have the right to tell my story. I have the right to say what happened to me. I have the right to my voice and my name. He took it long enough. I have a right as an American to talk about what happened to me, to own my story and my truth. I Girl, what? Yeah, you got the right to talk as an American, but you can't be out here spitting no bullshit. I have that right. I hope to get my voice back. It's all I want. And I've said that from day one. Thank you, Amber. I don't have anything else. All right, cross-examination. Me either, bitch. Hold on, let's go to the next video. Um, I wanted to check this one out really quick. We're going to watch the cross-examine as well, but I was a little interested in this one. This is a little five-minute video from Court TV that breaks down what do Johnny Depp and Amber Heard stand to lose and stand to gain in this trial. I thought this could be very interesting. Let's take a little peek. It's this case, at least for Mr. Depp, has never been about money. I believe it. This yep. case for Mr. Depp has never been about money. Nor is about is it about punishing Mr. Also, how funny is that? Johnny sued for fifty million dollars. He stood to lose thirty-six million from Pirates of the Caribbean as well as merchandising. That's a whole lot of money. And he lost other work too over the past five, six years, however damn long it's been. That adds up to about fifty million. Where did the hundred million dollars that Amber is asking for was did she get a contract all the way up until Aquaman thirty six? Where did the hundred million come from? Insane. It's her. Psychotic. It is about Mr. Depp's reputation and freeing him from the pr the prison in which he has lived for the last six years, and it's six years to the day. Mark that down, folks. That'll be the first time in history that a plaintiff's attorney, someone representing a plaintiff in a civil case, said, this case is not about money. But it, it, I don't I, think it was think for Johnny Depp, right? Uh, I think he's still got a lot of money, and he'll still be making more money from this point forward. But anyhow, that was uh, uh, Ben Chu explaining Johnny Depp and, and what this was about for him. Here's Amber Heard in her own words. We already saw it. I have the right. Somebody's going to win. Somebody's going to Dr. Carroll yeah, make a decision. Yeah, tell us what you guys think. Somebody's going to win. Somebody's going to lose. But who has more to lose? Let's bring back in Let's my guest, Dr. Experts. Judy Ho, Let's Dr. Carol Lieberman, and Susan Constantine. You guys know I'm a dumb bitch. Sometimes I just like to let the experts weigh in. And then I'm going to... Is that Chris Jenner? Dr. Carol Lieberman. No. Who do you think has more to lose here? <laughs> See, I don't... I don't trust I think Johnny Depp has more to lose oh, okay. because he had more in the first place you know he uh his what he had already achieved and also what she took away what all of this um her defamation took away from him so he has more to lose on a personal and a professional level now you know it's so interesting that they have brought um in this whole which seems to me like a hail mary but maybe that's because i've already long long ago decided in favor of johnny depp but okay. um, they're bringing in this whole First Amendment thing, you know, that to get the jury to think, um, even if, you know, he, yep, Ben they are. said, uh, Amber. That's why she started talking about some, I have a right as an American to say my truth. And I was like, bitch, we said that for six weeks. Where did it come from now? Because they're trying to make the case a little more like strategic in that sense, because the laying on a motion isn't working. Wins, even if there's no proof of abuse because of the First Amendment, 
well, that's not true. And and so they're now changing it into, of course, everybody, you know, on the jury is going to want to, we, sure, we have to believe in the First Amendment. But the First Amendment has some um, exceptions to it, like oh. you can't yell fire in the middle of a theater. And obviously, there is such a thing as defamation, or they wouldn't mm -hmm. be at this trial. So that is just a way of trying to get around the fact that there was no proof that Amber could show. Dr. Judy Ho, who do you think has more to lose here as this jury uh, continues their deliberations next week? I do think that Johnny has more to lose. And I think that part of it is because there is already so much um, in terms of misconceptions that I believe some of the testimonies or even other people's opinions about what's been going on in this case has, has really brought about people who are suffering from substance abuse issues. Not everybody who's a substance abuser is a also somebody who abuses other people or is involved in domestic violence disputes. Certainly when somebody is under the she said that like, you know, she oh, you guys can't see her the way she said it. She said not everyone who abuses substances is abusing other people. I was like, man, she said that like Elaine said it to her personally. The influence of substances, they tend to have more impulsiveness and sometimes these things can happen. But I feel like at certain points of this deliberation in terms of this trial, there has been statements that were made that almost tried to make this the two things one and the same. Yeah. And I think that if people believe in that, if there's anybody out there who believes in that, forget the jury, just the court of public opinion, I think that then Johnny's gonna have a lot more to lose, right? I don't think that we've talked a lot about, for example, somebody who suffers from substance abuse being able to recover, being able to be responsible citizens. They really didn't paint that picture. They're painting this picture of he's a substance abuser and boom, he also abuses Amber. These are one and the same. He's not to be trusted. He's not Dude, a credible person. I called that out before. That was is so annoyed she's so right they said he's a substance abuser he's an alcoholic he hit amber boom but by the way she did drugs too don't pay attention don't look everyone don't look don't look don't look like bro and i feel like it's sort of like a character assassination based around an illness that he may have mm -hmm. susan constantine who was um looking like they had more to lose who looked like they were more <laughs> anxious uh in this moment as the jury now has the case amber Amber looks like, I mean, she... Be Wait, I need to hear her response again. She just said Amber. Case. Amber. Amber looks like, I mean, she... Be the reason why I say that is because her performance and so much of her expressions, the words and how she phrases it, all of that is so hyper-elevated. So she's really working hard to try to prove herself, to try to convince people, and it's coming off so artificial, non, uh, and she doesn't appear authentic, and also I mean, deceptive. So when a person yes, gets to this place yes. where they don't feel like they're believed, they Yes, dude, I didn't think about that. The minute that you sense deception in somebody you are completely on guard am i tripping about that or do y'all do that too like it, it takes i'm oh my god i just dropped i am like i'm i'm stupid i try i give everyone the benefit of the doubt from the beginning god i could just feel my body posture drop because i'm so disappointed in myself I am way, 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 way too trusting. I, I'm like, yeah, take it, take my keys. What do you need? What do you, you need? Some money? What do you need? Like, I'm just way too trusting, right? But the moment that I sense deception, I'm like, what was that? I know exactly what that was. What else are you gonna do? What else are you doing? And that's really what happened with Amber. I, I don't know if you guys remember from the very beginning when we started covering this case. Look back at my very first video. I went into this saying that it was a toxic relationship, mutually abusive on both sides. And look where we're at now, prison for Amber Heard. Hype it up. They try to animate it that much more because they try to convince. And I think that Johnny, he's got that stable able, you know, he doesn't really get flinched too much, which I think he appears much more grounded. He does have a strong sense of sadness i do see that kind of depleting in his face as it's gotten closer i think he's just done i can see it really taking an emotional toll on him yeah susan constantine dr carol lieberman dr judy ho thank you all so much all right. i appreciate
They didn't really give us that much info. Let's go watch Camille roast the fuck out of Amber. Yo, Camille always really just be coming in hot, dude. Really hot. Okay, Camille, tell us what you know. Dude, here's the other thing too. I swear, Amber low-key hates women because she was getting mad about, well, no, maybe not. No, that's not true. That's not true. Scratch that from the record. But she doesn't like Dr. Curry. She certainly don't like Camille. She, she certainly don't like Kate Moss. She's got an, an extra hatred for some of these women. That's what I'm trying to say. Ms. Hurd, you just testified that this case has been very hard for you. So let's talk about that and why. She's about to do that thing. All right. All right. <laughs> All right. Your lies have been exposed to the world multiple times, right? <laughs> I haven't lied about anything I've been here to say. You sat here and told this jury that the events in Hicksville started with Mr. Depp getting really upset about a woman leaning on you. Is that correct? Yes, that's effectively what happened, yeah. You testified that he actually grabbed that woman's wrist and twisted it, right? And told her that he could effectively break her wrist by saying he knew how many pounds of pressure, or asking her how many pounds of pressure it took to break a human wrist. If somebody is beating me up, they're, they're not making a like, I wonder how many pounds it would take to break your tiny wrist. That's like some Hannibal Lecter shit, okay? Like, they don't have a discussion with you before they commit acts of violence, especially if she's trying to purport him as this crazy, impulsive drunk or drug addict. Usually their violence comes from impulse, not a, a Hannibal Lecter-style conversation. <laughs> but your own witness... Your former best friend, Rocky Pennington, she didn't corroborate that, did she? Uh, I'm not quite sure what part of that night she saw. There were a lot of people there. She didn't testify that Mr. Depp ra grabbed anyone's wrist in Hicksville. Again, I don't know what Rocky saw. There were a lot of people there that night. You testified that once you brought Mr. Depp back to your trailer, he trashed it, correct? That is correct. And the manager of the Hicksville <laughs> trailer park was furious that Johnny had wrecked the whole thing. Do you remember that testimony? That's correct. Well, we heard from that manager of the Hicksville trailer park, Morgan Knight, on Monday, didn't we? I'm not quite sure who that guy was or if he had any involvement in this. I know a lot of people have come out of the woodwork to be in involved. So you're accusing Mr. Knight of testifying perj and committing perjury? I'm not accusing anyone. I just don't recognize that man. Remember, I heard Mr. Liar, Knight testify that it was actually you who was upset with Mr. Depp spending time away from him. Isn't that correct? How would he know? He wasn't there. You heard Mr. Knight testify that it was he said he was there. So if you're saying he wasn't there, then either you're lying or he's lying. So you're calling him a liar. The mental gymnastics, the way Amber's able to do this is she concretely decides what the story is and all paths lead back to that story, no matter what, no matter what. Casey Anthony also did the same exact thing. Listen to her phone call from the 911 operators when they reported the child missing. It was actually you who was yelling at Mr. Depp. Again, I've heard a lot of people say a lot of things to be involved in the Johnny Depp show, but he wasn't there. He doesn't know. And he certainly doesn't know what happened behind closed She's doors. getting combative. Like most people. So you're calling Mr. Knight a liar? I am saying he wasn't there. And what he testified to doesn't match what I know happened. So this is where I think people first start to pick up deception as far as this, you know, testimony goes. We've seen Amber fucking lie her ass off for the past couple of weeks. And this form of deception to me is the things that you're saying and your tone and passion don't match. Your words are implying that you're not upset, you're not angry, this is just annoying. But the energy that's coming off is that you're frustrated. So when you're doing those two things at once, you're deceiving me. And now I'm looking for other signs of deception. But I don't fault him. He wasn't there, so how would he know? He testified he was there, Miss Heard. Did you hear that? That's Even his that facial expression she makes, it's like disgust. Like, try to mimic her facial expression and think to yourself, when do you ever make this face? He wasn't there, so how would he know? It's it's disgust. It's disbelief. Like, ugh. Ugh. Like, that That doesn't... She's pissed. Oh. He testified he was there, Miss Heard. Did you hear that? That's his testimony, yes. So you're calling him a liar? I'm just saying he wasn't there. 
You heard Mr. Knight testify that the trailer wasn't trashed, and that's why you're calling him a liar. He testified that a light fixture was broken, similar to the way that yes, Johnny's other than a light fixture, testified that was the to only my thing closet that was broken, being rearranged right? heard, and things like heard, that. The only thing that was broken in the trailer, according to Mr. Knight, was a light fixture. Yes or no? I realized that he summed it up by saying a light fixture was broken, just the way his security guard summed up him trashing my closet as being rearranged. Your Honor, I'm going to move to strike everything after he summed it up that it was a light fixture as non-responsive. She answered the question, Your Honor. Yeah. Over, 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 over. In the security guard testimony, Your Honor? I'll allow it. Go ahead. Mr. Knight also testified that he charged Mr. Depp only $62 for the damaged light fixture. $62 for the damaged light fixture. She's claiming that Johnny wrecked a room and the owner was angry. Well, the owner came out and said that he was not angry. And then apparently he only charged $62. Let me tell you right now, I've been charged $300 for not fucking sweeping behind my refrigerator when I moved out of an apartment. You think that he did massive damage when they only charged $62 when you know that the hotel owner knows that he got it? <laughs> he would have charged him for every single penny in that hotel room. There were no damages. You heard that, correct? I did. In Hicksville, you were the only one that was jealous that Mr. Depp was spending time from other people. Isn't that correct, Ms. Hurd? That is incorrect. In Hicksville, you were the one who was upset that Mr. Depp wasn't giving you enough attention. Incorrect again. Ms. Hurd, you told this jury that you had no idea the press was going to be at the courthouse when you got your TRO on May 27th, 2016. Do you remember that testimony? Uh, I said I did not have anything to do with it. Yes. No. My question again. You told this jury that you had no idea that the press was going to be outside after you got the ex-party TRO on May 27th, 2016. Do you remember that testimony? I apologize. I must have misunderstood Ms. Vasquez. Um, I actually had no idea whether they were going to be there or not. No, when I walked into the courtroom that day, it was completely quiet, still, that empty. Is Even though I had given Johnny's true. team notice that I was filing Objection. the TRO, your Honor, this is not we responsive. had no reason to Move believe to that the press knew. And, Your and Honor, I would talking. also ask that you instruct the witness to please stop talking once I lodge an objection. Your Honor, she's trying to answer the question as best she can, and Ms. Vasquez is misrepresenting to her what she testified to. Well, I was struck the last part is it's non responsive. Not about what she testified to. Let me just show y'all real quick in case y'all missed it. A former TMZ dispatcher actually went and testified uh, for and basically Johnny too. Depp, not really for Johnny Depp, just to tell the truth, where he explains that they TMZ was tipped that Amber would be at the courthouse that day. Here's a 30 second clip. What was your team of paparazzi supposed to do while they were at the Los Angeles courthouse on May 27th, 2016? Their objective was to capture her leaving the courthouse and then she was going to sort of stop and turn towards the camera to display the bruise on the right side of her face. To display the bruise. Display the bruise. Man, I really got to ask, when I run into these Amber Heard fans out in the wild, which is crazy that they're just outside in, in released into the general population. When I run into these people, I wonder if they just don't understand all of the facts of the case and they, they see themselves as Amber Heard. And I really wonder, would they falsely accuse their partner of domestic abuse and then go to the courthouse with their publicist, call TMZ, tell them that there's going to be a bruise on the side of your face and to come out right now? Like, are the people that are empathizing with Amber the types of people that would do that? Because if so, I'm terrified and I no longer wish to leave my home because they're out there. You sort of stop and turn towards the camera to display the bruise on the right side of her face, the alleged bruise. Did your team of videographers get the shot of Amber Heard? We did. What was your team of paparazzi? They got the shot, bro. Also, God, I can't even not talk through a 30 second clip. <laughs> Just if you could just answer the questions asked. Okay, thank you, Ms. Hurd. In fact, you testified that you were, quote, shocked when you saw press when you were leaving the courthouse. Yes? Yes. You weren't shocked at all, though, were you? Uh, incorrect. It was. You knew the horrifying. press would be at the courthouse, right, Ms. Hurd? No. Well, you did bring your publicist to the courthouse with you on May 27th, 2016, didn't you? I sure did. I'm a public figure. I brought my publicist in case it blew up.
in case. And you actually had alerted TMC that you would be filing would, a TRO against Mr. Call. Depp that very day, no, I did didn't not. you? No, I did the not. The one day you didn't bother to wear makeup to cover up the mark. On She's very confident when she says that. She says, no, I did not. Because she knows she's not the one that sent the email. I wish that, I wish we could see her reaction to being asked, did you know TMZ was alerted? Because she might be a little less confident answering that. On your face. I did not call TMZ or any other news source or paparazzi source. No one. Well, I we never heard did testimony that. from former TMZ employee Morgan Tremaine yesterday, correct? Did I hear his testimony? Yes. Yes, I was he here. Yeah. And you heard Mr. Mad. Tremaine's testimony that he knew to dispatch the paparazzi to the courthouse on May 27th, right? I heard him say that he knew that, yes. Yeah, and that he dispatched paparazzi to the courthouse to capture a picture of an alleged bruise on the right side of your face. Do you remember him saying that? I remember him saying that. That information must have come from your team, right, Ms. Hurd? Absolutely not. Why would I want that? What actual survivor of domestic violence wants that? Great question, Amber. What actual survivor of domestic abuse actually wants that? What in the fraudulent slip? Now, the video of Mr. Depp beating up some kitchen cabinets, you admit that you took that video, correct? Yes, I did. All right. And you acknowledge that the video was released online the day before you were deposed in connection with your divorce from Mr. Depp in August of 2016, Camille right? Said, I believe it was, yes. But you testified that you had absolutely nothing to do with the video's release, right? Absolutely not. And you testified that you learned about it when you landed after flying into LA. Do you remember I, that testimony? Upon touchdown is when I was alerted to the video's you existence You heard Mr. Online. Tremaine testify that this about this video as well yesterday, didn't you? Yes, I did. And you heard Mr. Tremaine testify that TMZ received the cabinet video the same day you landed at LAX. Yes? I don't know if that I, I don't know if that's what his testimony was. I'm sorry. You heard Mr. Tremaine testify that the cabinet video was posted 15 minutes after TMZ received it. Yes? That's what I heard him say. And that this could only have been possible if the video was received directly from the source. Yep. Yes? I heard him say that. I don't know if that's true or if that's Just to break this down for you guys that are unclear on what she's saying. Basically, TMZ received a video. They cannot publish it unless the person that filmed the video, aka the copyright holder, says it's okay to post. Upon them receiving it, they went to confirm with the copyright owner. More than likely, the copyright owner had just sent them the video, and so they're corresponding with them. It's like when you send a text message and your friend texts back right away, and you're like, oh, they're at their phone, and then it gets faster, right? Well, what Amber's implying happened was TMZ got a hold of the video. Actually, what the fuck? The only person that could have given them permission to release the video was Amber Heard. So if TMZ got a hold of the video, even a day or two later, she would have had to give permission for it to be released. But they got permission in 15 minutes, which means that most likely it was the copyright owner that, that gave them the permission, AKA Amber. So her sitting here and saying that it wasn't her is insane. It is, she's in an alternate reality and it's like disturbing to look at because she's willing to cling onto the sly at all costs. That's possible because it didn't come from me, Mr. I was flying. Tremaine so testified. It, it, I know that's incorrect is what I mean to say. Another liar on the stand. I just know that that's incorrect. Right. And you heard Mr. Tremaine testify that TMZ owns the copyright to the cabinet video, right? That's news to me. The cabinet video you filmed of your then husband, yes? The copyright ownership of that is news to me. I learned that yesterday. Wait, Miss Nemesis in the chat. Do you have an education or expertise in psych or law to be evaluating this case? Or are you attempting to analyze this with no background knowledge? Guys, we have an Amber Heard fan in the chat. We have an Amber Heard fan in the chat. She's attempting to disguise herself by criticizing my content without even Googling what I do or why I do what I do. They're here, everyone. Lock it down. Lock everything down. Sorry, if you're new to this channel, I have a fifth grade education. Continue to watch at your own risk. <laughs> it's the cabinet video that you captured of your then husband, yes? That is correct. I did capture that video, and the yes, that video, was my husband. The same cabinet video that was released the night before you were deposed in your divorce, yes? <laughs> That's correct. Oh, and the irony of that 15 minute exchange happening right before the deposition. <laughs> That's just... 
Unreal. You must have also heard Mr. Tomain testify that the version of the cabinet video that TMZ received was incomplete compared to the video the jury saw in this trial. Did you hear that? <laughs> She's acting like that's the news to video her, like Morgan the jury that you have seen is complete. Ago. Right. But the one TMZ got the day before your deposition in the divorce was incomplete. I don't know. I haven't seen it. He testified that at the beginning portion of the video where you set up the camera, that wasn't included in the video that TMC received. I don't know what video TMC received. I'm talking about Mr. Tremaine's testimony, Ms. Hurt. Let's just so focus on Mr. Tremaine. You're asking me to Tremaine. repeat his testimony? No, I'm asking you if you recall hearing him say those words to this jury. Yes, Under I, heard I got a question about that. If you were on the jury right now, how would you interpret this exchange? It's like she's attempting to gaslight the entire courtroom and the jury. Because you as a juror just heard Morgan Tremaine's testimony the other day. I mean, you as a juror just heard the, the manager of the, of the place, you just heard his testimony the other day. Like, you heard them say that the video was edited. The guy from TMZ said that the video is edited, and she's sitting here talking about some, I don't, I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. Like, as a juror, that would really put me on edge. Like, do you think... Do you think I'm stupid? Do you, are you going to try to convince me that I didn't? That's some Dolly DiPolito shit. Mike, I heard what you heard and I saw what you saw and it's not true. His testimony. We all did. And he testified that the end of the video where you can see be seen smirking. I know you testified earlier that you haven't been smirking in this trial, but you sure were caught on camera smirking in that video. I disagree with that. Not in, was also not included in the TMZ video. Everyone can watch that video and you can determine whether you think it's funny to me or not. That's because the video came from you, right, Ms. Hurd? Oh, no, it did not. You edited that video out did the not portions. Come to me. No, Ms. Hurd, from me. Ms. Hurd, you edited out the portions that made you look bad before sending it to TMC. <laughs> You're very wrong about that. So that if I wanted to leak information, I could have bad. done it in a more effective way a lot sooner and a lot more. Because I was exactly that kind of comment is really fucking scary. Because basically what she just said is... If I wanted to hurt you, I could have hurt you much, much worse than how I just hurt you. So you should be lucky that I didn't do what I did. Th that's basically what she's saying. It's kind of like a demonstration of power and it comes through as a loose threat in a conversation. But in the courtroom, that does not look good at all. And then Camille catches her right after this. We'll play it again. Before sex her. Come from me. It's her. threatening. You edited out the portions that made you look bad before sending it to TMC. <laughs> You're very wrong about that. So that if I wanted to leak information, I could have bad. done it in a more effective way a lot sooner and a lot more. Because I was exactly living with a mountain that, right? of this evidence. If I wanted to leak it, I could have done a lot more with it. I thought you testified earlier in this trial that you didn't know how to leak things. Remember I don't. Oh. Dude, look at this guy. You edited that video before you gave it to TMZ so that only Mr. Depp would look bad. Yes? That's absurd. Right in the middle of your divorce proceedings. Yeah. Again, you're very wrong. Camille's doing a great job of not making it a conversation, just saying it is what it is and moving to the next one and letting Amber let herself look stupid. I'd like to show you um, a picture from that's already admitted into evidence. It's uh, Defendant's Exhibit 799. She never gets nervous over defendant evidence because it's what she turned over. This is you at the courthouse on May 27th, 2016, when you got your domestic violence restraining order against Mr. Depp, right? It is. And next, and next to you to is you a is woman the named Jody Gottlieb, 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 right? Right. Yes. Yes. Jody Gottlieb is your publicist. And dear friend. Now I'd like to show you what's been marked as plaintiff's exhibit 1316. Sorry, that was loud. So plaintiff's exhibit. This is a picture of you and your friend Rocky Pennington, right? That is correct. Your Honor, I'd like to move to admit this photograph. Any objection to 1316? <laughs> No, Your Honor. All right, 1316 in evidence. You can publish the jury. This is a, this picture, is a picture of of you on May 28th, 2016. Look in, happy right, as a clam. Ryan? I don't know when this was taken. This is the day after you obtained the domestic violence restraining order against Mr. Depp, right? I have no idea when this um, image was taken. I did not take it. There's no bruise on your face in this picture, is there? Again, 
I don't know when this was taken and all Dude, you know, the bad thing for Amber here is she could not be looking any more fresh faced. <laughs> like, like she really couldn't like ladies when we're not wearing makeup like and, and we look nice and we're glowing without makeup. Oh, it's such a look like you can tell from a mile away. Amber looks beautiful here. She's just she looks great. Also, I'm outside. Completely I was obviously fresh wearing makeup. Where? I have no not idea a... when this was taken, so I have no idea if I can Let's speak to what rooms you can Let's see Let's refresh your recollection about when this picture was taken. Um, can we please pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 1315, just for the witness? Not a drop. Not this a is an drop, article not a dated May 30th, 2016, right, Ms. Heard? That's what it says, yes. And this article contains the same photograph of you and Ms. Pennington we were just looking at, yes? Mm -hmm. Yes, I see that. And the article is entitled, Amber Heard Smiles as She Puts Arm Around Friend One Day After Getting Restraining Order Against Johnny Depp. Is that, is that what the title says? I know that's what the title says, yes. Okay. Your Honor, I'm going to move to admit and publish the article with everything but the headline and date and the photo redacted. Objection, Your Honor. That's inconsistent from the way you've treated I'll all of these. I'll sustain the objection. All right, next question. Let's take a look at picture plaintiff's exhibit 1317. This is also a picture of you and Miss Pennington on May 28th, 2016, isn't it? I don't know when this photo was taken, but it looks like the same outing as the picture prior. Your Honor, I'm going to move to admit and publish plaintiff's exhibit 1317. Any objection? No, Your Honor. Right, 1317 in evidence, you can publish. There's no bruise on your on face your in this picture, picture either, right? Either, right? I disagree. Uh, if it is taken when you represent it was. I mean, also this this angle. Ain't no swelling. No, not ain't no nothing, bro. Taken, then obviously there's a bruise on my face. It's covered by makeup as per usual. Let's zoom out of that picture for a moment, please. Thanks, Tom. That's Josh Drew in this picture, right? Yes, that's correct. And Miss Pennington. And a little band of freeloaders. In there too. Ms. That Pennington is submitted a sworn statement on your behalf in support of your domestic violence restraining order, didn't she? I believe she did, yes. Mr. Drew also submitted a statement in support of your domestic violence restraining order. I believe they both did, yes. Mm -hmm. Mr. Hurd, I'd like to show you Defendant's Exhibit 512, which is already in evidence. You've seen this photograph before, right? I have. On the second day of your direct testimony, you testified that this was taken in the downstairs of the main apartment on December 15th, 2015. Do you recall that testimony? Uh, yes, I believe so. So it's your testimony that defendant's exhibit 512 reflects damage to penthouse five that occurred during the December 15th, 2015 incident, yes? Uh, I'm not quite sure from what incident this is when I see this photo in a, in a vacuum without context. Let's give you that context. Can we please, thanks. I could have day 16 trial testimony. Johnny seemed did a really good job here because I think what they essentially did was just made a giant list of everything Amber lied about and then put it into a script. <laughs> I saw this one, it was like an infographic of like things that Amber has lied about. And it was like a, Five? a list of 27 things. I will say though, some people are getting a little extra with the misinformation and it's fucking up our case. There are some like people that have put, you guys have probably noticed that some like weird videos or weird misinformation out there. And then it's making the whole community of people that support Deb look kind of weird. But then everybody that's actually been watching the trial it's like, but, th but this happened and this happened and this happened and this happened. It's kind of annoying. Specifically on starting on line 16, where it says, let's talk about December 15th, 2015. I'm, you said four, five, eight, oh, four, I'm on 4485, sorry. You said 4585. 4585. Four, Pardon. Line 16. Line 16, where it says, let's talk about December 15th, 2015. You see that? Yes. And then do you see that your testimony about December 15th, 2015 follows? Let's see, it's just the first line or two. Yes. Okay. Now I'd like you to turn to page 4603. 
on, starting Amber. at line 12. Chop, chop. 4603. Starting at line 12 and going on to page 4604, line 4. Okay. And do you see that you testify that defendant's exhibit 512, which is on the screen, yes. is a picture of the downstairs of the main apartment? That's correct. And the main apartment is Penthouse 5 in the Eastern Columbia Building, right? No, the, well, depends on what. The main apartment's Penthouse 3, generally, when we say main apartment. Penthouse 5 was where you had your closet? The is so weird there. The downstairs was kind of like, a, had some of my painting studios set up and a reception area. Upstairs was the closet. The mezzanine office yes. was in between. All right, so it's your testimony that Defendant's Exhibit 512 reflects damage to the penthouse, Penthouse 5, that occurred during the December 15, yeah, 2015. Yeah, okay, I, Velvet s said this. I wasn't gonna call it out because I felt like it was way too speculative. Uh, Juno said she's trying to regain control. So I feel like I kind of noticed that too. When you're in a really high pressure situation like this, uh, asking somebody to repeat themselves is a little tiny way that sometimes people like this get control again, right? Because they just, you, you were in control of everything, but they just made you do something, even though it was very simple. And then they can ask for it very respectfully and they get a little more control, right? And then when she gives her the papers to look through things, taking her time is also a way to regain control. And then when Amber says, okay, I found it, she kind of goes off into this la-la land of describing the penthouse and almost trying to go somewhere else. We see this a lot in police interrogations. When the pressure gets to be too much, they'll start talking about something that is less pressure, just thinking back to the map of the house or something like that. And, it, and of course, the conversations are towards the map of the house, but her demeanor towards this seems a little spacey, you know? incident right i'm just not sure from which incident this is a picture of since i'm only looking at even a though partial your counsel floor. was asking you questions about december 15th 2015 and then admitted this test this picture into evidence i again in, in relation my to that incident sorry go ahead what in relation to that incident on december 15th 2015 this exhibit defendant's exhibit you are the defendant Number 512 was admitted into evidence in this court. You testified that this was the result of damage that occurred on December 15th, 2015. Yes or no? Uh, I just need to orient myself because I'm just looking at a picture of a partial no, picture you of a No, you didn't just look at a picture. This was, you submitted it into evidence. If this was so serious from this traumatic night that you testified about, you don't know what this is? Come on, dude. Why have I been looking at this picture of the floor, the dirty floor, for three minutes? You looked at your testimony. I, you pointed me towards the page and then asked me a question. I haven't actually reviewed it. I don't know if this was submitted in relation to that incident. Let's pull up, let's actually leave up Defendant's 512 and please pull up Defendant's Exhibit 725, which is already in evidence. Right, thank you. In redacted form, Your Honor. All right, thank you. You can publish. Just side by side. You've seen this photograph as well, right? I have. Two different pictures? On the third day of your direct testimony, you testified that this photograph reflected spilled wine in Penthouse 5 on May 21st, 2016, didn't you? I, again, I don't know because I'm looking at a partial picture of a floor, so unless you remove the metadata, you I love how she insults the photo. I'm looking at a partial picture of a floor. Honey, you submitted this into evidence with a whole story behind it. <laughs> And now it's just a partial picture of the floor. Covered up, we could then tell. If you I didn't remove, cover it up, Your Honor. Could I, we unredact them honor. so we could get context? No, that's, that's how it's in evidence. That's, that's how it's in evidence. Yeah. Next question. Well, the metadata next to it is so that Ms. Heard, to avoid this Ms. Heard, confusion. there is no question Why pending, and I would appreciate it if you wouldn't be making argument to the jury. Sorry, it's I thought you would ask me about it. No, I didn't ask you about anything. Uh. Ah! Let's look. I'm, I'm unclear on what happened. I have to run it back. Your Honor. Them so we could get contact? No, that's, that's how it's in evidence. That's how All it's right. in evidence. Next question. Well, the metadata next to it is so that Ms. Heard, to avoid this Ms. Heard, confusion. there is no question pending, and I would appreciate it if you wouldn't be making argument to the jury. Sorry, I thought you would ask me about it. No, I didn't ask you about anything. If they were at a bar, Amber would Let's just slap her. Let's look at your direct testimony <laughs> from um, the third day. <laughs> Also, Amber saying, well, let's redact the metadata is embarrassing and disgusting because she, her team admitted it into evidence with the metadata redacted. They are the ones that covered it, and she knows that. She knows that. Let's turn to page 4750. 
in day 17 transcript. Uh, sorry, can you Four, seven, five, zero. Do you see where Ms. Bredehoff asked you to describe for the jury what took place on May 21st, 2016? I see that. Okay. And do you see that your testimony is reflected about May 21, 2015? Yes. That follows? Okay. Yes. Now let's turn to page 4804. She switches her demeanor in such a weird way. 4804. Not being questioned. Starting at line lies. 14? Yes. Through 4805, line 4. Uh, going to what line? Line 4 at 4805. Do you see that you're testifying that Defendant's Exhibit 725, which is reflected on the right side, reflects spilled wine on the floor in Penthouse 5? That's correct. Okay. And Defendant's Exhibit 512 and 725 seem to be different versions of the same picture, don't they? That's correct. Okay. So which is it? Which one was taken on December 15th, 2015? or May 21st, 2016. That is so If you remove the redacted metadata, you can find out. It's right there. Or if you're telling the truth, you would know. She's trying to make everyone look stupid, which is just, do you have a headache right now listening to this? One in the chat if you do, or write it in the comments. It's because Amber has moved to an alternate reality that none of us are part of. We don't exist in that reality, but she is confidently there. And so we can't rationalize why she's doing the things that she's doing. We can't respond to them. We can't understand them. And it just, you know what? I would, I would correlate the feeling I feel now to something similar to helplessness. There is no ladder that can get me to that alternate reality that Amber is so confidently in right now and acting as though she is a part of my world. She is somewhere else. And it's just mind blowing. There's, you can't even respond to this type of thinking because it's just not based in reality. And it's, it's actually, if you're dealing with somebody like this, it's actually very stressful. And then they win because you just walk away. It's just, it's crazy. It's crazy. Recognize a portion of a, a, a spilled wine on a floor and I'm supposed to know off the top of my head when you've no. lived through five years of this stuff? I don't think so. That's not how that works. Okay. Oh, that was real Amber that came out. Thank you, Tom. Can you imagine arguing with her? Ms. Hurd, at the beginning of your cross-examination last Ronald, week. Ronald, we approach. Yes. Yeah, why don't y'all approach and get her off the stand? Let me get a break or some Cheez-Its or something, anything that will remind me that I'm still on planet Earth. Just a bottle of water and a nibble of a Cheez-It and like a rerun of SpongeBob. I don't know. I can't. Y'all know sometimes I'll be up here just talking. I'll just be, just, I mean, that's what I'm doing now. I'm like, this is what she's doing or this is what's happening here. And then I just, sometimes I just have to check out. I just... Who said, somebody said, objection, Aquaman. <laughs> that was funny. Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen in the gallery, I would ask that there be no words or no phrases, no words, no sounds at all coming from you. If I hear one more sound, I will clear the gallery and we will continue this testimony without anybody in the courtroom. Understood? Now, I suspect some of you guys might be wondering where that comment came from. They approached the bench and then afterwards Judge Penny said that. I think that Rottenborn basically realized that his uh, person was getting combative and getting aggressive. So he started basically blaming people in the gallery. When we've heard people in the gallery laugh much harder and make many more comments and basically say, oh, the people in the gallery that are making comments right now are getting in the way of Amber's testimony and it's making her upset. So I, th I think, I suspect that's where that came from. Good. Good. All right. Your next question. And honestly, that's Mr. Hurd, at the beginning of your cross-examination well, last week, I showed in. you an audio where you told Mr. Depp to tell the jury, tell the judge, tell the world that he is a victim of domestic abuse. Do you remember that? That's correct. And you testified you found it hard to believe that Mr. Depp would tell the world that he's a victim of domestic abuse. Didn't you? I said I find it hard to believe that he would do that knowing that he himself had beat me up for five years. But he has told the world that he's your victim of domestic abuse. Had beat me up for five years. But he has told the world.
She's so fucking mad there. I'm going to... Okay, I always try to tell you guys when I'm speculating really, really hard. I'm going to overanalyze the fuck out of this. I believe in this moment, Amber is so fed up. She says, yeah, well, this is the guy that beat me up for five years. And she looks at the jury and the way that she scans the jury and then looks back is as though she didn't get the emotional response from the jury that she wanted. And then she looks back over. Just, I'm going to play it twice, but you watch it. Do that knowing that he himself had beat me up for five years. But he has told the world. Knowing so that he subtle. himself had beat me up for five years. But he has told the world. But she looks at them like she just lost them, like with that comment. And I think I've seen her do it another time too. Let's see if it happens again. But you, you know, you can tell when you're looking at people like, what, do none of you fucking believe me? Okay, fine. Like, and, it, and it's just, it's, it's very specific. It's very specific. And it's different than the empathy that she was shooting over to them throughout the entire trial. That he's your victim of domestic abuse, hasn't he? Well, he started to say that only recently. He didn't make that claim up until very recently. So when we signed our divorce agreement and we signed a statement saying that neither party had ever said She's false like claims for financial gain, it was relevant and important to me because I was the only one making the accusations. I was the only one making those claims. He wasn't doing that at the time. And he signed his name to it. You didn't expect as many people to show up and testify See, on his that look is so different than the than the we were getting before and it just makes me think that she's losing the jury time and he signed his name to it you didn't expect as many people to show up and testify on his behalf that did did you incorrect when you told this jury under oath that you never assaulted actually struck that sorry, no. um when you told this jury under oath that you punched mr depp because you thought of mr depp pushing kate moss down the stairs you didn't expect miss moss to agree to testify that that never happened did you Incorrect. I know how many people will come out of the woodwork to be in support of Johnny. Girl. So you think Ms. Moss needs to come out of the woodwork to testify for Mr. Depp? I know she did not say Kate Moss came out of the fucking woodwork. I know she did not. And she hates Kate, too. That's why she tried to throw a jab, but that was the wrong one. <laughs> Kate, Kate Moss coming out of the woodwork. That's a new one, girl. That is a new one. That is... That is really a new one. Yes, Barack Obama, he came out of the woodwork. <laughs> Everybody who was around in the 90s and the early aughts knew that rumor. I had heard that rumor from multiple people. Of course, that's what flashed through my head when my violent husband not only swung for me, but all of a sudden swung for my sister. Of but course I thought of that. Either. I did not expect her to show up or not expect her to show up. It didn't matter. It doesn't change what I believed at the time when we were on the stairs and I thought he was going to kill my sister by pushing her down the stairs. Cap, your honor. You told this jury <laughs> under oath that Mr. Depp was aggressive and trashed a trailer in Hicksville. You didn't expect the manager of the Hicksville property, Morgan Knight, to come forward and testify that that was untrue, did you? Incorrect. I've already been through trials with this man. I know how many people will come out and She's support him. She's losing the jury. When you told this jury under oath that you had no idea that the paparazzi would be at the courthouse on May 27th, 2016, you didn't expect a TMZ employee to show up to testify that TMZ had been alerted that you would be at the courthouse and knew exactly which side of your face to take a picture of, did you? I know how many people will come out and say whatever for him. That's his power. That's why I wrote the op-ed. Is I was speaking to that phenomenon. How many people will come out in support of him and will fall to his power? He is a very powerful man, and people love currying favor with powerful men. Currying and I know favor that for and risking Santa, jail it. time for committing perjury? Excuse me? Oh, my God. She's so fucking mad. You know what the key is for Amber? Let Amber go on her own rants about whatever she's pissed about. Let her go off script, and she will get mad so mad. And for risking Santa, jail it. time for committing perjury? Excuse me? I didn't, I didn't hear your question. You didn't Excuse hear my me? question? Ms. Vasquez, if you do mind, Curry, please just repeat the question. I didn't hear you. Curry favor and commit perjury in this courtroom? I have seen For a powerful people do this. man? I have seen people do this time and time again. That's why I wrote the op-ed. You didn't expect Ben King, the house manager in Australia, to show up from England. He flew from England to testify that Mr. Duff's fingertip was found exactly God, where he said it would be. Did you? I have never heard Johnny testify to knowing where his finger was or really, frankly, making a claim that he knew where it was when it was found. 
I've never heard Johnny claim that. You didn't expect Johnny Keenan does, Wyatt. Johnny has never misheard. actually said that. Ms. Heard. And I think the jury can. Yes. Ms. Heard, there's no question pending. Oh. You didn't expect oh Keenan Wyatt, Mr. Depp's longtime sound technician, to show Wait. up and testify. Wait, that was you. That was she. Just look at her attorneys. Like, are you gonna say something? Are you gonna do something? Look. You didn't expect Keenan Wyatt, Mr. Depp's <laughs> longtime sound technician, to show up and testify that Mr. Depp is not being fed lines through his earpieces, so but instead funny. music. Did oh my you? God! Look not at that it Whitney. Matters. Look at Whitney. Whitney just sitting here. I didn't even realize Whitney was right there watching her sister get demolished like that. Whitney talking about some. <laughs> matters much, but of course, of course I did. I, I know how his employees treat him. So you probably, I know how his, his team treats him. Of course I expected that. Okay, so you probably expected Isaac Baruch to come and testify for Mr. Depp, right? Um, just had her I'm not sure closed, I thought about that. Like, yeah. But you didn't expect Mr. Baruch to weep, to weep for Mr. Depp after what you've put him through and so many others with your lies. I relate you? to, I relate to. Can Whitney stop being so fucking expressive? I was watching Camille and her for a minute, but I cannot stop looking at Whitney. I, hold on, I gotta go back at the end after this. Isaac, because he and I are There's the only no ones who cried right. right on this oh, stand. Nothing further. All right, Cry, uh, redirect. The Whitney! Hold on. Shut up, Ben. We're Anytime going back for mother. Whitney watch. Hold on. I swear, was she started that with Mr. Depp getting in the beginning? And what he tested. We're giving you enough it. attention. And correct again. Lee, quiet. Uh, and release. One team so you dated May. I believe they both okay. did. Okay, all right. I was trying We're to go for Whitney Watch. That line for I didn't see her before. I this. said Camille for multiple for people. Us. Wrote the op-ed. You didn't expect Ben King, the house manager in Australia, to show up from England. He flew from England. What was that face, Whitney? What is this? Look at her. You didn't expect Ben King, the house manager in Australia, to show up from England. He flew from England to testify that Mr. Duff's fingertip was found exactly where he said it would be. Did you? I have good? never heard Johnny testify to knowing where his finger was or really, frankly, making a claim that he knew where it was when it was found. Okay, sorry. I was just on Whitney watch. Is it just me? Whitney is so expressive. Like, she just had her eyes closed. Or, oh, she pissed. She's so mad. She mad at Camille. Hold on. I'm mute this because I don't want to hear Amber anymore. Look at her. What is, what is up with her? Whitney. Whitney looks... Like, I'm sorry, Whitney looks like she's been abused by Amber her whole life. She's just completely just, it's like somebody's just pushed her down into the seat emotionally and that's how she carries herself. I don't think I've ever seen any, I don't know. I don't, Whitney, are you okay? Serious question. Blink twice, girl. Jennifer Howell tried to get you out. We're still here.